Hi, welcome to Rafael at Home. My name is Sterling Heshpeth. I'm the programming manager for both the Docklands and Mill Valley Film Festivals, and you have been watching uh, Leona. And joining us is the director and co-writer, Isaac Cherem. Thanks for joining us, Isaac. Thank you, Sterling, for having me. It's a, it's a wonderful film. It's a wonderful character study. Um, and uh, the main actress, Nayan uh, Gonzalez Norwin, uh, also uh, co-wrote the film with you. So how did you two get together and how did you uh, come to craft this film? So uh, it, it started with just me. I, I started by myself when I was 23 years old. I just uh, moved out of my parents' apartment and, and I started having this kind of uh, external view for the first time of my family or my community. I kind of moved out and, and that allowed me to to see a, uh, another perspective um, and and I was really angry at what I was seeing uh, especially because I was immersed in it I was I was being a part of it and I was angry it was kind of a it was kind of an auto criticism in a way. And, and now I can look back and say that at the time I was like, I'm angry at my parents or my, the school I went to and, and everything that was going around and, and, and the kind of um, uh, religious system that surrounded me. Uh, I was angry at all of that. And, and, and so I wanted to write something about it. And I, and, and I said, I should write about, a woman having this like basic uh, choice of uh, of of loving somebody and and having those difficulties and 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 at the time I was living with a friend of mine uh, who was dating a Jewish friend of mine and and I was seeing them struggle from both sides, understanding both sides both sides and and it made me really angry that it was so difficult for them to just have a relationship so i kind of started writing the screenplay uh based on that based on my sisters i have two older sisters and even though they have not uh, had uh, any non-jewish boyfriends at the time but it was what if what would happen if they uh had because i i knew for me it was different because for women is is more um oppressive in a way it's more like demanding you got to you got to do more to satisfy and and you got to stay in the family and and guys are like more kind of allowed to do whatever they want to do in a way not not so much but more than women i'm sure so that was the hypothesis that led me to to write the screenplay and i was 23 years old and and the first draft of the screenplay was horrible in the second third and now now that I look back I can say it was horrible because it wasn't until I met Nayan and I said I want you to play this role that and, and she agreed and she liked it she's I I I thought she was only an actress and and then bouncing ideas of each other how the character should be or where or, or where does she come from and, and how does she think of different things or, or what does she do for a living? I, I realized that the script was lacking so much and I I proposed to Nayan to write the screenplay together and, and she went to school for um, literature, for English literature. So she she actually wanted to be a writer when she went to, to university. So she said yes. And that was definitely the best uh, the best thing that happened to the movie. The, the fact that she accepted and the fact that we wrote it together. I said, let's throw to the trash what we have and let's start from scratch. And, let's, and, and at the time she was living in New York, so we had to work from home as if, as if it was a pandemic. So we were just like this. Through, through Skype working every day and on the screenplay. And, and we kind of had uh, the same vision in a way, which was weird because I didn't know her, but she's my age and she was kind of living uh, not similar things, but she thought of things in a similar way because she comes from a very liberal family. Her mom um, is 
a famous actress from TV in Mexico and and everything around her is theater and and arts and 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 liberal way of thinking so it was it was it was very uh fun to to do that with her and to learn from her and and we would play for example she would be Ivan and I would be Ariela and we would kind of throw dialogue and see how it worked and we kind of uh yeah learn from each other and and the script was what it what made us you know the the film that's what we wrote and and what i had was just something uh childish from somebody because and i say childish because there is something in the jewish community in mexico i feel that is infantilizing is that a word yeah yeah that infantilizes uh and it's kind of like you're a kid until you marry and then you're a grown up like a like a full grown up like instantly just because you married and and so i was kind of treated as a kid uh in in my past years even though i was 23 years old and i was living at my parents and it, it was like i was kind of a a prince living there and so and 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 i just started to to live life like an adult and pay rent and 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 go to the grocery you know get the groceries and stuff and 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 Nayan was living somewhere else since she was 17 so it's it's crazy and then i realized that we were talking a lot about growing up about transitioning into adulthood which mm -hmm. we were not sure that we were doing that but then it was like of course we i was writing about that 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 was what, what happening to me that feeling of uncertainty that comes with with accepting adulthood and and dealing with it and and dealing with the responsibilities of it and uh yeah best best thing that that happened to the film was having Nayan on board with the script that's it's wonderful and it's a beautiful performance too uh what you say reminds me of that critical scene about halfway through the film where the the leader of the community has a sit down with her and he talks about unity and solidarity in the Jewish diaspora. He talks about how important it is to maintain tradition, but it evolves into emotional blackmail to her because you're right, he takes a very paternalistic, very condescending view of she doesn't understand what she wants. What she wants is what the community needs. Um, and that was a that that really is a, a, a critical turning point in the film in terms of how how invested all her community is in her choice um and how little choice she actually has talk a little bit about the choice and the the restrictions that she continues to have through the rest of the film yeah i mean first of all it was important it, i knew that was an important scene in the film before we shot it and and it was because and that came because that jewish friend of mine that was dating my roommate uh she constantly had to deal with these strangers that thought they had you know um the authority authority to come to her and to tell her how to live her life or what to choose or what to do or what's good for her and 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 it's and she was like struck by like how can how can this older men come to me and tell me what's better for me they don't even know me and and that's a thing that's like it's as if they don't need to know her because we are all the same we all want the same we all need the same it's like we are a, a chain and and we are all part of this kind of uh yeah chain and where where it's like we all need to be strong so that the community stays together and 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 we achieve the prosperity that we have achieved because they arrived in, in to Mexico as refugees from Syria extremely poor and and it is really that uh that strength and that um holding on together to one another that really gave them what they have and but now it's like okay a hundred years have passed and 
I have grown a third or fourth um, generation, and I don't have the same needs or wants as my great grandfather, and and it doesn't have to remain the same. That's that's the thing. It's like there's uh, there is this contract or this thing that that uh, the leaders of the community signed where they are um, pledging or yeah to the community to stay as if they are in Syria Aleppo the same so conservative that's the conservative lifestyle is just stay the same because mm -hmm. that's what made us um yeah have 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 what we have or what we are today so yeah i think we are at a point where it's like our generation doesn't quite want the same as our parents or great grandparents or you know and it's like we have to to struggle to to be ourselves because it's the first time that individuals are want different things i guess or it seems that way well the, there's a wonderful scene after she uh, or a ser series of scenes after she breaks up with Yvonne where she starts noticing probably things that were always there, but she only notices for the first time that they all have the same values. They all know each other personally. They all gossip among each other and how she is going to be stuck in this bubble that has nothing to do with all of her passions and all of her interests. You know, the things that matter to her the most don't have to do with him, but have to do with external to the community. And that, that part of our identity is as precious to her as her her relationship um was that something that naturally evolved or was that something that you crafted very specifically for for when she breaks up with yvonne uh i think it was unconscious and and i think it has to do with me moving out into my own and kind of going back to my grandma's for for lunch or dinner or whatever and kind of having another perspective on on everything that's going on and and seeing how well hold on this is we're all the same we are all my cousins uh they are dating jewish girls from the same school that we went to and it's all happening in in kind of such a similar way that it's like where is where is everyone's personality because i wanted to be a filmmaker i moved here and I desire this and that and, and it's different from 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 anybody and and where's everyone's individuality like it's lacking where like I started noticing that and yeah I think um, that's and, and I get a lot of criticism from from Mexican Jews <laughs> at that point because it's like you are telling we are all the same and 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 it's unfair but I guess that's that was my perspective at that point where where it's like I live somewhere completely different, and yes, you do of course have differences between each other, but on a global scale, you guys are all living extremely similar lives, and is it a coincidence that you all want the same things and that you guys are all heterosexual and all 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 of you want to live in in yeah the same way like in a way so yeah that's the kind of questions that I that I started asking myself at, at that point uh let's talk about uh, Christian Vasquez who does a wonderful job as Yvonne he has such great chemistry uh with Ariala um Talk a little bit about the casting there and, and what kind of exercises you had since the two of them together is so critical to making the film work. Uh, it's funny because Ivan was going to be played by a, another actor and at then like two weeks or two or three weeks before shooting, that original actor called me and said, I'm stuck with a TV series that got uh, stuck in time and, and I can't get out because my contract and this and that. And so I was like, I can't um, prolong uh, the shooting of my film. So I got to find another actor. And and I and I talked to Christian. And the thing with Christian is that I, it hit me that I have talked, I had talked to him before about this character. And I didn't remember 
And I don't know why I didn't do casting to him because I know if I would have done, uh, if, if he would have come to the casting session, I know I would have stayed with him because he's such, uh, yeah, it just, it's what I, it's what I needed for the character to be. He's in, and also as an actor, he's extremely generous and, and very charismatic and he's always like whatever you need. And, and he was always looking at, what I needed as a director and, and, and his ego was put aside the whole time. And, and that was a pleasure to work with him. And he's, he's a, he's a, um, he's an actor with a lot of experience and, and, and he knew that I needed um, the use of that experience because as a first time director, I really didn't know what was going on at all times. Like I, I was using my intuition to, to make decisions, but at the same time, I've never made a film. I've never finished a film and see like how my decisions impacted the final product. And he has made so many films and so many TV series and everything. And he was like, I can give you this. I can give you that. I can give you this. So it made, it made it easier for me to, to decide what I wanted. And, and, Honestly, the chemistry between them, it's, it has to do mainly with, with both of them in, in, and they became really good friends during shooting and, and they, uh, you know, they, they just, yeah, they became good friends by themselves and, and they talked about what was, what they, about themselves and, and, and that made it easier for them to 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 look at each other and to respond and to 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 react to each other to listen to each other which sometimes lacks uh, in in some actors in Mexico it's like you're not listening to the other person and i think they had the desire to listen to each other because they liked each other as friends and and and, and that helped a lot and also because Nayan kind of we wrote Ivan's character uh, based on Nayan because Nayan is the, the child of, of these uh, people from theater and, and actor, actors and actresses and stuff, and so so he kind of listened to her as to as to where the character comes from, and that was that was helpful. Now uh, we see a lot of Ariella's uh, uh, murals over the course of the film, and she's a very talented artist, but. Um, we see an evolution of her art too, where the final mural, the Liana mural is so different in terms of its looseness and its liberating quality that all her other murals are very, there, there's lots of going on, but still it has very strict borders and lots of structure. And, and talk a little bit about who, who actually did those pieces and how did you want to see her art change over the course of the film? Uh, well, I, didn't know exactly what I wanted for the murals, but I kind of had an intuition. Again, it's like I, I, I didn't know exactly, but, but I found a website called womenwhodraw.com, and then it's like there's thousands of women drawing different things because I knew it had to be a woman in the sense that it is a woman uh, art that's going on, and 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 and, and so I browsed on that web page for days and days because it's infinite. And at some point I arrived to this little image that was one of the murals that we actually used in the movie. And I was like, this is it. This is, this is exactly the way that I envisioned it. And I saw all of the work of this person and, and who is she? Her name's Caitlin. I'm going to email her. And then it turns out she's a, she's a, she works at a cafe in in Philadelphia, and and she's glad to hear that that I liked her her stuff and that I wanted her for the movie. And and the script was not translated into English; it was only in Spanish. So I had to tell her the I I told her about the script, about the 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 story, about my story, and Nayans, and we talked to her and everything. And 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 the idea was to kind of is the way like the first mural is there's a lot of faces and then there's three and then there's two and then the last one you see is kind of a self-portrait 
And so that was kind of the idea to kind of leave behind and, and think of oneself first. And, 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 and it was kind of the discovery that about self love and, and, and self respect and, and yeah. <laughs> well, you do the exact same thing. There are two bathing rituals that start and end the film. And the first bathing ritual is about community. There's so many people there to celebrate. And the last bathing ritual she does completely by herself. And it's it's almost like her assertion for independence that she needs to demonstrate, even if it's just to herself. How, how did those two bathing rituals, how did the idea of those come up to frame the film? Uh, the idea kind of, uh, we had that last scene kind of not at the it was it wasn't the last scene it was kind of uh kind of in the middle somewhere there and and at some point nayan and i kind of restructured the whole script and we said we have these scenes that we like like how are we making the 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 arc and i went to film school so in film school they talk a lot about first image and last image and 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 so it kind of hit me and i was like nayan this has to be the last image this this has to be the ritual of her own and and we got to make her in because at first it was just a scene where where she was bathing and she was relaxing and kind of having a time of for herself but it wasn't the ritual that we see in the movie but but that's how how we it was a coincidence kind of it was yeah. kind of a coincidence that we said this has to be the ending yes it has to be the ending and and yeah like you said it's like the first one is for the people and am getting married and this guy and my life's gonna be like this and let all everybody see how I'm doing and this is such a success to get married and and I want everybody to be around me and party and everything and 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 on the other side is her for herself and 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 yeah that's that's how it came well it, it well, works it, it works out perfectly it's a wonderful way to start and end the film so congratulations on uh leona what are you working on next thank you so um i thought i'm done with jewish themes and i can't handle it anymore and i've been all around the u.s and canada and the whole world really uh, in festivals of uh, all types, but all, mostly Jewish film festivals, and and I and I said I'm done with with Judaism, and I got it out of my chest, and perfect, it's out there. And then in the middle of the pandemic, it it an idea hit me that I couldn't ignore, that is um, not only Jewish but about my family, about me. And and how I grew up, and and so I made a documentary. It's a in one a year ago in January, I was like kind of I was having a lunch with my mom and my sister, and my sister kind of uh, out of the blue she talks about an in vitro that I was born uh, because of an in vitro treatment. And my mom says, no, it wasn't in vitro. It was something else it, because it was an experiment. And I was like, what are you talking about? So it seems that I was, uh, the reason my mom got pregnant of me is because of a crazy, weird experiment that never happened again. But I, I think I was the second person that got pregnant. I, 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 my mom was the second person that got pregnant that way. And so the pandemic started and and we got separated everybody and and quarantine and everything and and it started going around my mind like what does that mean you know what it, what does that mean for me like why did they want me because the thing is that my mom wanted or my parents wanted a boy because I'm the third one and my dad didn't want to have more kids and my dad's the only um the only guy from him and his sisters he's the only one and his dad died four years ago that his name was isaac cherem and so the only one who could name his son isaac cherem 
was my dad and he he already had two sister two uh daughters so they had to have so the pressure the community family society pressure it was just too much and my parents decided to to be a part of this crazy experiment to to have a son and so it worked and they named me Isaac Cherem and and what is that name you know what is all that mean and I have to ask them and so I I made a documentary about that I I I made like this uh, psychoanalytic uh therapy sessions with my family which was amazing because I've never I've never gotten really to listen to them so profoundly and intimately and and I thought I was going to make a, a short film about why they decided that but then me and the editor we realized it's much bigger than that it's about patriarchy about not only the Jewish community it's just about macho kind of uh you know thinking and patriarchy and it's about it's it's something more universal than just uh a couple who decides to 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 be part of this experiment to have a son and so that's done and it's waiting to it's waiting for the um, for the uh, yeah world premiere um i can't say now where it's going to be but uh but that's going to happen this year and then um uh, i have another fiction film a comedy about this couple who um this young couple who want to live together and not get married so it's kind of uh, a challenge in Mexico because it, one thing is the Jewish community yes but the Mexican community like Mexicans in general they are very conservative and and they think about marriage and and religion all the time and 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 there's so much things and pressure that go into young people and 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 it's like we have to to break these ideas that are not um i guess they're not uh valid or not at least not for everybody you know and 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 we need to do something to break those ideas uh in in the in the minds of people we love so we don't lose them and we don't lose ourselves in in doing uh, in, in pleasing. Can you tell us what the name of the documentary is? Yeah, it's called a documentary about my penis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we'll be yeah. we'll be sure to keep our eyes out for that one. So yeah, thank uh, you. congratulations on the festival gig. Have a wonderful 2021. And thank you so much for sharing your film with us, Isaac. It was a treat talking to you. We appreciate it. No, thank you so much. And thank you for watching the film and hope to see you in the next film. Great. All right. See you. Thank you. Thanks.